Jack and Cheryl are head of the Fitzgerald family. They own more claims than anyone else in the area and have over 30 relatives working their mines. It's a strictly family-only business. We've been mining in here for 27 years now. Talk about mining in the north and you get the Fitzgerald name, whether it's tin, sapphires or gold. We've mined it all. And how long have you been set up here? Four months, yeah, a couple of months. We're interested in talking to Parker. Jack's interested in selling, but he's got to prove himself. I'm sick of people coming in here and trying to mine and go broke. You've got to be the right bloke to mine. It definitely feels like they're not massively comfortable with this situation. Would you agree? Yeah, I'm sure that there's a bit of a question mark of what our intentions are here. But figuring out who to trust on both sides is difficult. So I'm coming here to really assess pieces of property for myself and not just taking people's words for it. Just want to learn what they do see what kind of gold's in the ground and see if there's any opportunity for us. Mining this land would be a lot like mining at home for Parker. 1.7 billion years ago, a supercontinent known as Nuna began to break apart and form new landscapes. Over 100 million years, one piece of land drifted from North America and attached to Australia forming part of North Queensland, meaning the rock formation and mining methods are almost identical to Parker's. The added bonus, the Palmer gold fields don't freeze. Yeah, it's pretty nice to actually come someplace where there's like a lot of similarities to what we do in the Yukon. This is fairly similar to bedrock, but the lack of permafrost probably makes it a lot cheaper mining. Time for cleanup. So is there much like really fine flower gold here? Uh, no, not much, eh? Hey. We've got the big pieces. We don't worry about that fine stuff. We'll leave that for all the old ladies. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey look Parker, have a look at this oh, one. Jump in there and have a look at <laughs> <laughs> it's full of gold. Yeah. Oh. What do you reckon, guys? Yeah, that's You're cool. good. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, wow. This is all reflecting on your face, Parker. That. It makes me miss my grandpa's place because that's the last time I've seen any kind of coarse gold. One day in particular, we had like 45 ounces of nuggets, like a lot of it that size and bigger. Wow. He was pumped. Parker is very much after a piece of land that he can work when it's too cold back in the Yukon. And it looks like this is an amazing bit of land. Look at that. Ours is only like between 81 and 84 pure. 98%. Wow. It's one of the purest golds in the world, eh? Right now, I'm picking that he's super excited about this, this spot. Oh, I totally agree. So is that a pretty normal day, above average, below yeah, average? That's normal. Pretty normal. Normal, yeah. That's a good normal. They've got piles of gold, but it's one thing to show us their operation, but it's another thing to be able to test it properly. So yeah, I'll be interested to see what the final total is and then start talking to them about ground. So, what number are we looking for that makes you feel like this is going to be a good... Like comparable ground-wise? Yeah. Uh, well, our ground would normally average about an ounce per 100 yards. The Fitzgeralds ran 500 yards of pay dirt. To be as good as Parker's Yukon claim, they need five ounces of gold. 7.2. <laughs> for every 100 yards, they make almost $700 more than Parker, plus no extra cost stripping permafrost. After seeing all that, I was wondering if we could like stick around for a bit and test some ground out. I'm sure we can. That'd be great. I'm, I am really interested in this area, but we are a little homeless. I was wondering if it's all right if we camp out here. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't mind if you do, yeah, five dollars a head. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thanks. Bye, guys. Cheers. 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 Huh? Mind blown, right? I mean, not only is there gold here, but there's really good gold. Wow. Holy cow. It's a bit of a start to the Palmer Gold Fields um, with the John Withers lease. But this ground's amazing. It's actually a viable business opportunity. We're definitely gonna probe this one. But in the Yukon, I have found this before, where getting on good ground in a family like this is really difficult. They're gold miners. They don't want to give up good ground. To determine if there is enough good ground to expand his business, the team split up. That's good. Good? Yeah. Parker and Danny meet with Jack and Cheryl at a possible lease. But unlike the virgin ground Parker's used to mining, the site's been worked already. Is there some gold here? Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> Jack says there is. If Jack says there is, there is. Good. This area here, Sleepy Hollow, we have mined it. But we've bought Parker here because it's a good way to pick up gold after the wet season. Oh yeah, look at that. Between November and April, the monsoon season brings over three feet of rain to this area, turning the now dusty roads into turbulent creeks. Water washes gold down from the hills, which gets caught in cracks and crevices, creating Mother Nature's own sluice box. When the creek bed dries, the gold can be mined. Every wet season, the process repeats, in theory, leaving new gold for the taking year after year. There's two things that I'm looking for. Is, is it profitable and is it scalable, right? You gotta be able to make money and I want to be able to make lots of money. Rock and roll. Mate, I might give up the camera work and just do this. Um, I'm going to go to Tony Beats, see if he'll hire me. I think that would be a wonderful experience for you. <laughs>